Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to check in on the Dow Industrials and the S&P 500 this week. We talked about the NASDAQ last week, so we're going to hit these two this week. Uh, and then I'm going to briefly talk about what's going on with the NASDAQ and why I named this uh, uh, video for stocks. And then I want to see what the VIX is telling us. And uh, VIX is doing something kind of interesting, so stay tuned. All right, so uh, it's September 2nd today, Sunday, September 2nd, and uh, wonderful. I just love being able to say it's September. I mean, it just, this is my favorite time of year. I love the fall, love autumn, and I love the fact that it's finally going to cool off. And here in the Dallas area, as a matter of fact, we've got, I think, one day forecasted where we're going to be above 90 degrees Fahrenheit in this coming week, which... Like, yes, now I'm looking for evenings down in the 60s so we could start to feel like at least into the 60s. So anyway, all right, the Dow was down 22 points on Friday, but it was up 174 points for the week. Now, I am still looking for a little more push possibly here to finish off this fifth uh, minuet wave. OK, so that is the fifth minuet. One, two, three, four, five of this C wave, which is what we call the minute wave. We, you know, the, the way the degree structure goes in Elliott wave, intermediate, minor, min, minute, minuet. Okay, that's how you just keep breaking it down in terms of the, the labeling that we have in here. And, uh, and then, of course, the next wave above intermediate is primary, okay, and then cycle wave. So that's how we look at it. You'll, you can look at the, we, you know, I label them differently in here, but I'm thinking one more push maybe up in here. Don't know if it's going to get up into this gap or not. That's going to be real interesting to see, but the wave structure hasn't really changed. What's this trend line? This trend line is the trend line of the weekly chart, okay? So here's the picture for the week. Like I said, it was up 174 points, but you can see how it backed off from the high during the week and became just a little bitty doji candle, very similar to the doji of last last week, the previous week. Uh, so we were bouncing around the upper end of this channel, and uh, the upper end of this channel is this channel of the entire bull move from March of 2009. So that's what we're looking at there. We go back to the daily chart. All right, let's uh, take a quick look at the SPX. And let me get it punched in here. Here's the daily. Okay, so this is my preferred count on the SPX. The really, both of the counts are extremely valid. The real difference is where does wave four end? Does it end here uh, around May 3rd or does it end over here around April 1st? Okay, so. Right now, here's a uh, triangle for wave four, and I've got an ending here around uh, on May uh, 3rd. Make sure I've got that date right. Yes, May 3rd. What that has created since that time, it has created what looks to me like an ex uh, expanding ending diagonal pattern for the fifth wave, okay? So here's the fifth wave, and what you try to do is you analyze the wave structure of the fifth wave, and, and uh, when you start to see series of three waves, you're like, hmm, what's going on? This is a legitimate, real possibility as to what could be happening here in terms of an ending diagonal pattern. So that would imply that this little C wave of the third Manu wave is about to end or getting very close. It could, it could have ended at the high this week, or it could you know, one more push. You could continue to push just a little bit higher up into here and then roll on over. But the real challenge is going to be when this starts to roll on over, are we getting just this fourth wave of this, you know, five wave triangle? Or are we getting something different? And if we go over here to the alternate count and we have the fourth wave end with a, uh, a zigzag type of pattern, uh, in here, uh, and then all of a sudden we're looking at a five wave impulsive wave count, okay, with the first wave being a, um, a leading diagonal pattern for the first, first wave. But it's an impulsive, and both wave counts, whether you count this impulsive or whether you go back to the previous one and count it as an ending diagonal, they're both valid. 
And so what this one implies is that the fifth wave is getting very close to or may have already ended or you know about ready to. And then when that rolls over, that's it. So the way what I'm looking at is, you, you know, it's, as it starts to sell off, you're going to be like, OK, you know, if it's back over here, it could be this fourth wave. Well, the real test is going to be, does it come all the way down and take out this wave two down here about 2692? Because I'm expecting to overlap wave one because that's what an expanding ending diagonal pattern, that's what a wave four will do. It'll come down into the territory of wave one. So that's what we're watching for. And this is valid. This wave two here is the same level as the wave two over here. So that's why, you know, that's a pretty critical level. Now that's a long way down at this point. But <clears throat> right now we're just watching to see you know, when is this going to roll over? And I think we're getting close. Okay, so that's the SPX. The, the, uh, I talked about the NASDAQ last week, and the NASDAQ account really hasn't changed. It's fairly bullish, and it continued to push high this week. It got above 8,000 on Tuesday, I think it was. It continued to push, 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 push. But look what's going on. Bloomberg had this article on Wednesday, and this was with data through Tuesday's close, okay? The four stocks, Netflix, Alphabet, Apple, and Amazon, accounted for 48% of the NASDAQ composite index for the year, okay? We're to almost half. Almost half of the gain of the NASDAQ composite for the year was from four stocks. And remember, the NASDAQ composite has over 3,000 stocks. Now, that's what I call narrow leadership. And you notice the note down here, Facebook's contribution accounts to less than a half a point. At first, I was like, really? What are they talking about? But when you go look at Facebook's chart and look at the data through Tuesday, the, uh, the close of Tuesday, August 28th, Facebook is practically is basically flat for the year. So because of the major sell off that it had, it's practically flat for the year. So that's why it's just these four stocks and what they've contributed uh, through that point in time. So. The whole point of this is to say, this is really, really narrow contribution in the NASDAQ. So the last thing I want to mention today is what's going on with the VIX. Okay, so let me pull this up. This is something to be aware of. Okay, so I have a red line here at the 20 level because I feel like when you get above 20, you're really getting elevated readings in the VIX and the market's really ex exploding. Uh, and uh, so what's happening is we're getting divergence in here, just like we got back in January. OK, so it's acting very similar to January in that uh, the VIX normally kind of if the market's going up, the VIX kind of stays down or drops off kind of thing. OK, and chops around at low levels, uh, especially when the market keeps pushing higher and higher and higher. Well. OK, and it did that. And then it, well, what it happened was we got divergence back in January until right here. That was January 26th. And that was the peak of the stock market right here on January 26th. And then we exploded to the downside in the market and to the upside in the VIX. So the similar type of thing is developing right here. Now we'll watch and see, does this hold over the next week or two? And does it come up here and break this trend line? and explode to the upside, implying major selling going on in the market. So that's something I've got my eye on. We're watching the S&P uh, in here. And uh, that's the current picture that we've got for the weekend. Uh, if you felt like the video was helpful, hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. And uh, remember to share the video. Everyone have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Uh, and if you're in the United States, we've got a three-day weekend. Remember, no trading on Monday. All right, we'll talk to you on the next video.